Good afternoon, Cameron University. This week in SGA, we have an update on two pieces of legislation and a sneak preview at a brand new piece concerning smoking on campus. Senator Sean Eckrow is here with details. The senators and representatives are back from OIL, and CUSGA reporter Mitch Watson has the story. All this and more coming up on This Week in SGA. government, students who attended the Oklahoma Intercollegiate Legislator are back to share with us what they learned. The students who attended were selected by the Executive Council. CUSGA reporter Mitch Watson caught up with them at last week's meeting. Here's the story. Several students from Cameron's Student Government Association traveled to Oklahoma City for nearly a week, participating with a statewide college legislature. Forty years ago, the administration of former Governor George Nye formed the Oklahoma Intercollegiate Legislature. At OIL, college students from all across Oklahoma replicate all three branches of the state legislature and members of the state come to participate. In an SGA meeting, the students who went gave a report about their experience. Each member spent four days in Oklahoma, spending most of the day in chamber discussing legislation. Senator of the School of Business, Rachel Faring, says why she chose to participate with OIL. Basically just to get your voice heard basically is what it is. Um, we have senators, actual senators of the state and representatives of the state come in and watch us. They sit in the gallery so they get to hear our, our ideas so we kind of get to actually represent the state while we're there and say kind of like what we think should be going on and what should be happening with the state. An international student from Japan also traveled with a group. Serving as a senator, Luigi Nakahari says the trip was a great way for him to learn more about the American government. Senator Nakahari explains what he thinks is different between the Japanese government and the United States government. I think uh, in American government uh, there are lots of more debate and uh, the people are more in it, uh, like, uh, active compared to the Japanese government. Everyone was like objection or only information, it's like that. Where in Japanese government the people are more quiet. Yeah. That's the main difference I could see. The students also had some comedic relief during the chamber sessions, as members would be made to do things such as sing and dance the hokey pokey or receive a new name from the legislature at any time they violated the session code. Senator Nakahari was renamed Senator Take It All Off after he removed his tie to make a point. My point was to show them you cannot remember everything. So I went to in front of everybody and took my tie and asked everybody, can you remember the color of the tie? and can't remember the shape of it, so many people couldn't remember, so I was trying to make a point. Nakahari was trying to show that the security cameras on all police cars would be beneficial because of the human vision and memory is limited. When he did this, he violated the session code and was renamed Senator Take It All Off by the legislator for light punishment. That's all for this week in student government. This is Mitch Watson reporting. This week we have an update on recent pieces of legislation. The first piece addressed the expansion of library hours on the weekends. After many questions to the author, this legislation passed. On the other hand, legislation that called for parking spaces for expecting mothers failed during its second reading. Many senators and representatives felt that the legislation was unnecessary because expecting mothers can request special parking permits from the Office of Public Safety. New on the floor next week is an important piece of legislation that calls for a smoke-free campus. Co-author Senator Sean Eckrout is here to talk about it. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's very nice to have you. Now, I want to start off by talking about this legislation. It calls for a completely smoke-free campus. Why is that? Um, because it's just better for the health of Cameron University and people visiting, the students, faculty, and alike. Okay. Um, what inspired you and your co-author, Ryan Fawcett, to write the piece of legislation? Because there's just so, there's rules uh, prohibiting or limiting the areas in which we smoke, or smokers are allowed to smoke right now, mm -hmm. but they're not being followed. So if we make the campus completely smoke free, it'd be difficult not to follow it. Right. Now this is, this is not something new. It's new to Cameron. But you have other schools that have passed this? How many other schools have passed a smoke-free campus? Uh, so far there are 365 other campuses such as um, UCO and OSU 
So we wouldn't even be the first in Oklahoma to pass it. No. And, and you guys talked about how you contacted those schools. What did you learn from them? Um, we just tried to find out what penalties they have for uh, people who disobey the uh, non no smoking rule mm -hmm. and compare them to what we thought we should have. And if they were, theirs were too strict, we would so make a medium. What is our penalty? If the legislation passed, what would happen for someone who is smoking on campus? Um, the first time, they would be getting a written warning, and that would be kept on record. Mm -hmm. The second time, there would be a $50 fine okay. that would go towards uh, pamphlets and uh, hopefully nicotine patches and gums mm -hmm. and like seminars and classes that people who wish to stop smoking could uh, participate in. Now, what about um, smoking in your car on campus? Would that be allowed? It would be allowed because that's your privately owned vehicle, mm -hmm. but only if all the windows are rolled up and the cigarette has to be put out before you enter your, oh, okay. or leave your car. Um, what about, no, Senator Fawcett kind of mentioned the rights of people who live on campus um, and how, how they, it's an alcohol-free campus right now, so it would pretty much be the same thing as smoke-free when you sign the contract. Could you explain that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, Cameron University is a dry uh, campus, so we can't have alcohol. Um, should be the same with uh, cigarettes. Mm -hmm. If you wish to smoke, just leave campus and go smoke. Right. So basically, it would it wouldn't be taking rights away from the people who live on campus because right. they would be agreeing to follow this rule before exactly. before they come on campus. I understand that. Now, how do you predict that the student body is going to respond to this piece of legislation? Uh, I know that there's going to be uh, mixed feelings about that. Some people are going to love it. A lot of people are going to hate it because we do have a lot of. Uh, smokers just because of the demographics here at Cameron University and it's going to be tough. It's probably going to take a couple of years to get <clears throat> through people's heads, but hopefully it'll be a positive impact. Right. Now you say it might take a couple of years. I know in the past they've brought up legislation about making it a smoke-free campus and right now we have the 25 feet rule, but that's not very well followed. So why do you think that a smoke-free campus would be enforced when the 25 foot rule isn't very enforced? Well, if we can get this passed, um, that means that we'll have a uh, President Ross's approval, and when with President Ross's approval, that means that she's going to be backing it, which hopefully the Public Safety Department will um, start enforcing it. All right, better. good. Well, I wish you luck on the legislation. How long have you been involved in SGA? Uh, this is my second year. And you plan so on being involved in the future? Definitely, definitely. Do you have any other plans for upcoming legislation this year? Not so far, but I'm pretty sure I'll make another piece of legislation. Well, we're going to stay closely tuned to what happened, and I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Student Activities Director Zeke Nafee addressed the body at this week's meeting about the Higher Learning Commission survey. The survey requires student feedback about Cameron. Students can access the survey on any campus computer by selecting the icon on the desktop or visiting the link. The self-study shows how well the university is doing. Administration urges as many students as possible to participate in the survey. Completing it automatically enrolls you in a drawing to win a prize. Students have until November 22nd to participate. That's all the time we have left for today's show. Tune in next week for more news from the Student Government Association. Please be sure to check out CU TV on YouTube by going to youtube.com and searching CU Internet TV. On behalf of everyone here at CU TV and for This Week in SGA, I'm Amanda Finch.